welcome i'm madhuti singh and you're watching my india international trade is vital for global economic growth fostering cooperation and resource sharing india and iran have bolstered their trade ties by securing a decade long contract to develop and manage the chabahar port the port's development is crucial for enhancing regional connectivity and diversifying trade and we bring you this report take a look located on the gulf of oman coast in southeastern iran chabar port holds immense strategic significance for india providing a crucial gateway to central asia it facilitates india's access to afghanistan and beyond fostering regional connectivity and trade routes. By establishing a sea land route, it reduces dependence on Pakistan for trade with Afghanistan and Central Asia, ensuring greater security and flexibility. On May 13th, New Delhi signed a decade-long contract with Tehran to develop and operate the Chabar port. The agreement, brokered between Indian Ports Global Limited (IPGL) and Iran's Port and Maritime Organization, involves an investment of 120 million from IPGL complemented by an additional 250 million in financing bringing the contract's value to 370 million situated along Iran's southeastern coast on the Gulf of Oman Chabar port is operated by India the port lies only 170 kilometers west of the Pakistani port of Gwadar making Chabar very strategically and geographically important under Modi's leadership the momentous agreement that began on 23rd of may 2016 is culminating today in a long term contract symbolizing the enduring trust and deepening partnership between india and iran the development of chabar port aligns with india's strategic interests in the region enhancing its connectivity and trade prospects till date A total of 2.5 million tons of wheat and 2000 tons of pulses have been shipped from India to Afghanistan through Chabar port. Moreover, in 2021, India provided Iran with 40,000 liters of eco-friendly pesticide, specifically melathion, to combat the locust threat facilitated through the port. On the other hand, Iran, with the majority of its population situated in the western region, seeks to address the relative underdevelopment of its eastern part. To achieve this, Iran is focusing on enhancing infrastructure around Chabar port, including the establishment of a free trade zone and the construction of road and rail connections linking Chabar to Central Asia. New Delhi has stated that both parties will ensure proper supervision of the construction and further development of Chabar port through effective monitoring mechanisms. From our perspective, it will provide us connectivity to Afghanistan and another very important and oil rich and the mineral rich Uh, geography called Central Asia, so it would be part of India's Eurasian access and outreach, uh, and then further on to Europe. And of course, uh, because of the sanctions on Russia and Iran, there may be difficulties. But at the same time, uh, there are other possibilities of going to Europe through that. The Chabar port has attracted interest and concern from the United States. Following the deal, the US cautioned that any nation engaging in business with Iran faces the possibility of sanctions. In response to this, India's external affairs minister, Dr. Jay Shankar, emphasized the broader regional advantages of the project. The this is actually for everybody's uh, benefit. I don't think people should take a narrow view of it and they have not done so in the past. While historically critical of Iran's nuclear activities, Washington had previously acknowledged the significance of the Chabar port development. The US perceived it as a potential check on China's expanding influence in the area, notably through its involvement in Pakistan's Gwadar port within the framework of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor (CPEC). There's an exciting surge of enthusiasm and attitude towards sports in India. and not only is the country witnessing a remarkable increase in youth participation but there's also a noticeable rise in fitness awareness among the population 
As a result, the sports good industry is experiencing a significant boost. So let's explore how this burgeoning trend towards sports and fitness is making a positive impact on the sports goods industry in the country. India's emergence as a sports powerhouse owes much to the government's proactive measures. The Kalo India campaign stands as a testament to this vision, offering athletes enhanced opportunities to nurture their talents. With improved facilities and organized tournaments, athletes, particularly from rural areas, are finding a platform to excel. पहले हमारे इन युवाओं को सही प्लेटफॉर्म के लिए इंतजार करना पड़ता था आज खेलो इंडिया अभियान के तहत देश इन प्रतिभाओं को खुद तलाश भी रहा है तराश भी रहा है द फिट इंडिया मूवमेंट स्पीयर हेडेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट encourages individuals to integrate sports into their daily routines for improved health. This evolving nationwide sports landscape not only bolsters athletic endeavors, but also fuels growth in the sports goods industry. In recent years, there has been a steady rise in demand for sports equipment, marking new horizons for the sector. future is very good, bright future. क्योंकि फ्यूचर ब्राइट है क्योंकि जैसे पहले दस प्लेयर खेलते थे अब खेलो इंडिया ने उसको क्रिएट कर दिया एक एक ऐसी चीज़ क्रिएट कर दी कि हर बच्चा कहता है यार मैं भी कोई कोई ना कोई गेम्स में पार्टिसिपेट करूं उससे क्या हो रहा है कि जो अंदर बैठे गांव गांव में बंदे बैठे थे अब शहरों के बंदे भी जो है ना बच्चे हैं जो वो भी आना चाह रहे हैं अब उससे देखो अगर बीस पच्चीस बच्चा भी उसमें आ जाता है तो देखो मार्केट तो बाहर मार्केट तो बढ़ जाएगी तो हमारा तो कस्टमर बढ़ जाएगा तो इससे डिमांड और बढ़ेगी India's sports good market was valued at 4.5 billion dollars in 2020 and is projected to surge to 6.6 billion dollars by 2027 thereby showcasing a persistent rise in demand for sports equipment. Now the manufacturing hub for sports goods in India is predominantly residing in Jalandhar, Punjab, renowned globally for its quality sports products. Jalandhar city of the northern Indian state of Punjab stands as a premier sports hub, boasting the nation's largest sports goods market. In recent years, fueled by a growing passion for sports, demand for sporting products has surged, driving prosperity in the local industry. Jalandhar caters to a diverse array of sports equipment needs, serving both domestic and international markets. From grassroots competitions to global tournaments, sports gear from this region finds its way onto fields worldwide. Furthermore, the industry here prides itself on delivering top-tier products, catering to the exacting standards of professional athletes globally. We can be able to make a success at the international level. There is no such thing. And today, we have a lot of मैन्युफैक्चरर ऐसे हैं जो इंटरनेशनल मार्केट में ब्रांड वाइज इनका प्रोडक्ट जो है वो सेल हो रहा है The sports goods industry is making a substantial contribution to the Make in India and Self Reliant India campaigns. Its expanding market not only invigorates the nation's economic landscape but also enhances employment prospects. The synergistic alignment of government policies and initiatives aimed at fostering sports is catalyzing a transformative shift in India's sporting landscape, propelling rapid growth in the sports market. The intersection of these forces will play a pivotal role in steering the nation towards development and prosperity. Let's go to New Delhi which recently commemorated the 720th death anniversary of the prominent Sufi saint Hazrat Nizamuddin Aliya. Now the event featured a soulful Qawwalis, religious speeches and hymns epitomizing reverence and communal harmony. In the heart of New Delhi 
lies the centuries old shrine of Sufi saint Hazrat Nizamuddin Aulia. This Islamic structure is renowned worldwide and is visited by devotees from all walks of life to seek blessings from the revered saint. Recently, on the occasion of his 720th Urs festival, the Darka transformed into a hub of spiritual devotion as people commemorated the anniversary of the Sufi saint in love and harmony. The event drew devotees from various corners to pay their sincere tribute and to lay chadars at his grave. <laughs> हर एक मजहब के लोग यहाँ पे आते हैं हर हर एक की मान्यता होती है जिनके मन्नत होती है बड़ी दूर दूर से वर्ल्ड का लोग आता है The five day long Urs festival brought people whether they were Hindus Muslims Sikhs or Christians under one roof as they bowed their heads together at the shrine The darga was decorated with lights and flowers creating a festive and spiritual ambiance Inside the Darga complex, devotees were seen enjoying and participating in the Qawwali programs, while the powerful religious hymns by followers mesmerized the listeners. आप लोग देख सकते हैं पूरे दरगाह शरीफ में जो जायरीन आए हुए हैं पूरा खवाली का इंतजाम है पूरे उसके मौके पे चारों पांचों दिन खवाली रहती है और पांचों दिन सभी जायरीन के लिए लंगर का इंतजाम रहता है दरगाह शरीफ में लोग दूर दूर से आते हैं अपनी मन्नतें मुरादें दुआएं लेके नहूब लाही की बारगाह में अल्लाह पाक उनके वसीले से सारी दुआओं को कबूल करें The Nizamuddin Urs is not only a religious observance but also a cultural event that fosters communal harmony and spiritual reflection. The Urs festival represents the rich cultural and spiritual heritage of Delhi and serves as a reminder of the syncretic traditions that have shaped Indian society. Now let's delve into World in Focus featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. These teenage female drivers are taking on Formula 1. No woman has raced in the motorsport for nearly half a century, but these 13 and 14 year olds all share one dream. to become the first female F1 world champion at this training and assessment camp there are half a dozen trainees four from Europe one from Australia and one from Malaysia the last woman to race in formula 1 was Italy's Lella Lombardi in 1976 the sport now has its own all female F1 academy support series led by former racer Susi Wolf Rural tourism in India encompasses a rich tapestry of experiences offering travelers an opportunity to immerse themselves in the vibrant culture, traditions and natural beauty of village life. And as travel enthusiasts seek authentic experiences that connect them with the essence of a place, let's explore how some hidden gems in India's rural areas stand as shining examples of the beauty and the richness of the country's diverse landscapes in the heart of india's northern state of uttarakhand amidst the majestic vistas of the kirsu hill station lies a hidden gem in the form of a homestead Nestled amidst picturesque landscapes, Bassa Homestay offers more than just accommodation. It presents an authentic immersion into the culture of mountain dwellers. Operated by a dedicated women's self-help group, Bassa Homestay stands as a beacon of empowerment and cultural preservation. offering tourists unforgettable experiences. Established by the state government with the aim of empowering local women, Bassa Homestay is not just a place to stay, but a catalyst for change. By actively participating in the hospitality sector, local women are not only gaining economic independence, 
but also playing a pivotal role in boosting tourism in the region. महिलाएं अपना रोजगार चलाती हैं और महिलाएं बहुत खुश रहती हैं यहां पे जैसे जो भी कस्टमर यहां पे आते हैं खुश होकर जाते हैं जो भी हमारा कल्चर यहां पे है जैसे गोबर और मिट्टी से लिपाई हुई और पत्थर से बना हुआ जो पुराने जमाने में बनाते थे यहां के तो वही हम लोगों ने एक कल्चर अपने आगे लिया और सरकार ने हमें दिया और बहुत खुश होती हैं यहां पे महिलाएं जैसे जो भी कस्टमर आता है बैठा के हम लोग खाना खिलाते हैं उनको तब वो चले जाते हैं खुश होते हैं एट बासा होम स्टे विजिटर्स आर एम्ब्रेस्ड एज मोर देन जस्ट गेस्ट दे बिकम इंटीग्रल पार्टिसिपेंट्स इन द लोकल कस्टम्स एंड कल्चर From the moment visitors step foot into the serene surrounding Sabasa, they are enveloped in the warm hospitality of the local women. Every corner of Bassa reflects a commitment to preserving and sharing the essence of indigenous heritage. Reflecting the region's abundant culinary legacy, the cuisine at Bassa Homestay draws from the natural bounty of the land and time-honored recipes that have been cherished for generations. The ingredients used in cooking are sourced locally, often harvested from the surrounding fields or picked fresh from the garden. हम गेस्ट को ये मंडवे की रोटी गढ़वाल में क्योंकि मंडवा बहुत ज्यादा होता है इस मंडवे की मांग बहुत तेजी से है क्योंकि हम गढ़वाल में ही देते हैं हमारे भाषा में मंडवे की रोटी गेस्ट लोग मंडवे की रोटी खाकर बहुत ही खुश हो जाता है क्योंकि वो कहते हैं गेहूं की रोटी तो हम खाते रहते हैं लेकिन ये मंडवे की रोटी हमको आज मिले हैं मंडवे की रोटी और झंगोरे की खीर आलू मूली की खिचड़ी और हरी सब्जी ये सबसे फेमस है हमारा ये फाणो भी है हमारा इधर का ये साग ना फाणो होता है ये गहत का फाणो सोंट होते हैं एक दाल होती है सोंट के रोटी भी देते हैं भरे हुए परांठे आलू मूली के मूली के परांठे भी बनाते हैं ये हम गेस्ट लोगों को देते हैं गेस्ट लोग बहुत खुश होकर जाते हैं और बहुत तारीफ करते हैं हमारे बात से The workers' dedication at Bassa not only fuels the flames of women's empowerment, but also ignites a passion for sustainable tourism, ensuring that every visitor leaves with memories as enriching as the landscape itself. India's musical landscape is a mosaic created with threads of classical folk and contemporary influences resonating across generations and borders and this ancient musical tradition with its intricate rags and thals has been passed down from generations as a legacy for centuries the banaras gharana in india one of the prominent indian gharanas or schools often known as the custodians of indian ancient classics is carrying forth this tradition even today through the long lineages so join us as we explore the musical heritage of the city of varanasi Nestled on the banks of the Ganga River, the city of Varanasi intertwines with spirituality, resonating with hearts through its timeless melodies and classical music. The streets often come alive with the traditional beats of drums, tabla, and sitar, creating a vibrant symphony captivating locals and visitors alike. Admits this lies a musical tradition that originated in the 18th century and continues to flourish today the Banaras Gharana alongside the ancient banks of the Ganga The Banaras Gharana known for its intricate musical compositions vocal brilliance and seamless dance moves narrates the tales of ancient India standing as a testament to the country's rich cultural heritage Let's meet Pandit Deobrat Mishra, 
who hails from a long lineage of Indian classical musicians. His father, Pandit Shivnath Mishra, is an Indian sitar player and the first person in the Banaras Gharana to have introduced the sitar. In 2022, he was awarded the Padma Shri, one of the highest civilian awards of India. Mishra, one of the prominent sitar players and the 11th generation of the Varanasi musical Gharana, proudly carries forth the age-old legacy of his family, which continues to stun audiences worldwide. Soulful music you can find in Varanasi. There are, you know, so something is like Varanasi is still preserving it. And for international audience, I want to tell you that this this Banaras is still carry on the old tradition. So, if somebody wants to come and study in, in this beautiful town, they should come and they should meet musician here. <music> The soul-stirring vocals and instrumental brilliance of this ancient musical tradition are inspired by various musical styles like Drupan, Kayal, and Tumri, creating a unique music language. With each note and tall, the intricate musical composition of Banaras Gharana evokes a multitude of emotions in the listeners. Moreover, one can still find the relevance of the ancient Guru Shishya tradition within the walls of Gharanas, where they teach discipline through a spiritual way of teaching. In Varanasi, there is still this tradition of um, Guru and, and student, and to learn there, yes, and that's how I ended up in Varanasi, and that's how I found this, this school and my teacher. There is a fundamental difference in a lot of, te like in teaching, in how I, how I learned guitar in the West from, from teachers, but this Guru Shish Parampara is way more, it builds on a lineage and like, I'm not here and I, I am not only here and have a teacher, but I'm living in this house Having a, te having a teacher whose father is also my teacher and whose son is also playing and I'm like immersed in, in music and I'm, I'm immersed in this environment. Mentioning the Banaras Karana, the allure of Indian classical Kathak is exquisite. Alongside the symphony of musical instruments, the Tals of Kathak hold equal prominence for both Banaras and other Gharanas. And even today, these classical traditions are being meticulously preserved by eminent figures like Vishal Krishna and God of Mishra. They are actively passing on the legacy through platforms like academies and through their various stage performances. While music provides a total brain workout, dance adds a unique dimension to it as well. Like music, Dancing Garanas holds equal significance and is popular worldwide for its eccentric style and technique. Kathak, a classical dance form of India, has historic associations with Indian Garanas, as does the Banaras Garana. The articulate Kathak dance of Banaras Gharana has its own distinct style characterized by intricate footwork and rhythmic moves, making it a medium to narrate mythological folk tales. Meet Vishal Krishna, an outstanding Kathak performer and the 11th generation dancer of this Gharana. Krishna exhibits the distinctive movements characteristic of the Banaras style of dance, which resemble the divine gestures of Lord Shiva and Lord Krishna. I started learning from very childhood when I was like three and a half years old and everybody is in my family is a dancer, my aunt, my father, my sisters, they all are dancers. So my father used to say one thing, I will speak in Hindi, that I never learn how to learn the fish. So I think I think that from childhood, it was influenced by my house, that my father was a teacher, a guru, and 
बहुत सारे उन्होंने स्टूडेंट्स तैयार किए हैं बनारस में तो मुझे लगता है ऐसे धीरे धीरे मुझे उसमें एक कह सकते हैं ना कि कथक से मुझे तैयार हो गया The term Kathak is derived from the Sanskrit words Katha, which means story, and Kataka, which means the one who tells the story. The ancient tradition of Kathak dance is deeply ingrained in the cultural value system of the country, which is being preserved through gharanas in Lucknow, Jaipur, Raigarh, and Banaras. These gharanas also run academies and schools where they impart various techniques and styles of Kathak art and storytelling. हमारा एक जिसको बोलते हैं धरोहर जो कि गुरु दादा गुरु पर गुरु जी से जो मिला हुआ है प्रसाद वो हम लोग बहुत सजीव को रखते हैं कि आने वाली पीढ़ी को हम ये बता सके ता थई थई तत आ थई थई तत तो जब मैं आगे वाली पीढ़ी को बताएगा तो वो आगे वाली पीढ़ी को बताएगा और ऐसे कई फॉरेनर्स स्टूडेंट हमारे पास हैं जो कि यूएसए से आते हैं लंदन से आते हैं इटली से आते हैं वो उनकी मतलब उनको सीखने की कितनी रुचि है अंदर से गराना होल्ड्स अमेंस सिग्निफिकेंस इन द इंडियन म्यूजिकल अरेना सर्विंग टू प्रिजर्व द कंट्रीज एज ओल्ड म्यूजिकल हेरिटेज akin to the sacred Ganga's flow from generation to generation and impart their values to the world with the same sincerity. The Banaras Karana's enduring legacy exemplifies India's rich cultural heritage, continuously inspiring and captivating audiences worldwide through music and dance. That's all for today's show, but we will see you next week at the same time. Till then, goodbye and take care.